we wanted to add that voice of like specialty coffee and direct trade coffees and fresh roasting and things like that. So we just basically talked about it for a while after we came home and a year later we were here with all of our stuff. Joel Pollock has been part of the artisan coffee movement for 20 years. Last year he and his wife Leticia packed up and moved 3,000 miles from rainy Portland to sunny Miami. Here in a land of Cuban espresso and Latin American coffee stands, Panther Coffee is carving out a space all their own in the up and coming arts district of Wynwood. We're not here to take over the whole culture of coffee in Miami. It was just like one participant and we do what we do the way that we have learned to do it over the years. And we're also very close to the coffee producing countries. Mm -hmm. One thing I like very much is that all day long we have people from different coffee producing countries and almost more than half the time somebody in their family was either a grower or a picker. Wow. I mean, you just don't find that in the Northwest. It's a different awareness about coffee production that I've never seen it before. When they come in here, the people of this city they taste the coffee. They come to taste the coffee as an espresso or a macchiato. Uh -huh. It's refreshing. Strong coffee is, is the name of the game here, so it's cool. All of Panther Coffee's beans are fair trade from farms that Joel and Leticia have visited themselves. That direct relationship not only ensures that the producers are being treated well, but allows Joel to understand the nuances of each variety. That respect for the bean continues through roasting and eventually brewing. So you guys roast all of your coffee in-house? Yes. Right here. <laughs> what does that entail? Yeah, roughly a 15 minute process. Uh, this is a funnel for receiving the green coffee. We allow it to drop into this drum. Uh -huh. Usually the drum's rotating. Uh -huh. And the burner's in the back and it throws heat into the faceplate of the roaster. The faceplate is this part here, which is cast iron from 1927. Wow. So it's very heat retentive. And then these arms turn on to cool the coffee. And there's a perforated screen right here. And there's air that's being pulled through that screen to cool it off as quickly as possible. Now that I've seen the roasting process, I'm dying to taste the coffee. So Joel agrees to walk me through my very first cupping, a tasting ritual that allows you to experience the true essence of the coffee beans. Today we're emphasizing South America. Okay. So Brazil. 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 Okay. This is the Peru. This is a Colombia. And this is our espresso blend. What we're going to do is smell the coffee okay. or evaluate the aroma. And the way that we do that, we grab a cup, knock it back a couple times, smell it. Smells good. What am I looking for? Well, we're looking for kind of if there's anything that is like evoked in your mind when you smell it, like has this sort of a caramely note. I was just going to say caramel and I'm not lying. <laughs> I'm not lying. I really was going to say caramel. This is a very caramely coffee. Um, <laughs> and this is Peruvian? This is Peru. Okay. Has a little bit more of a pointed quality to it, a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more citric, fresh fruit. Now it's time to hit the coffee with some hot water for the next step in the cupping. Okay, so now what do we do? We're gonna put our nose like almost in the coffee. Okay. It's really important to be close so we can smell it. Okay. And we're gonna stir three times. Okay. So there's no clumps. So one, two, three, and that's it. And uh, okay. go ahead and smell the back of your spoon because it got hot. And then oh, we rinse. Oh, wow. Okay. And then we can move to the next one. A few more sniffs and then it's slurping time. Okay, so it's time to slurp. Okay. So we take a spoon uh -huh. and just kind of slurp it like it was hot soup. And what that does is that aerates the coffee a little bit onto your palate. Did you spit it out? I did. I yeah. swallowed it. Can I swallow it? It's okay to do. I just can't bring myself to spit it out. It's just so good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to be walking out of here really buzzed. So here we're going to go to the espresso. Oh wow, that's delicious. A little rounder, a little yeah. more depth. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like sitting in the hot tub and then jumping in the swimming pool. Yeah. <laughs> totally different taste. It is really different. Finally, we have to taste the coffee when it's cold to get the true sense of the flavor profile. A coffee can do one or two things when it's cold. It can either kind of crash and burn or it can really open up and, and show its, its true quality. A really good coffee will taste just as good or even better at room temperature than it did when it was hot. Mm -hmm. So what happens if you're at a diner and someone gives you a cup of diner coffee? Oh, we don't project our coffee snobbery onto other people. That's why we <laughs> opened up our own place. Just, <laughs> we'd probably just skip the coffee. If the coffee's not good, we skip it. We drink I it at home. Say. Yeah. All right, that makes sense. If you're in Miami and want to test your own coffee palette, drop by Panther for a public cupping. Check out HungryInBrooklyn.com for more information and times, as well as exclusive coffee buying tips from Joel and Leticia.